with another one of our Let's Connect Facebook panels this Tuesday morning. If you're just hopping on, uh, we'll give you a few seconds here. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, so we like to do these every Tuesday, um, hold these different live panels just to talk about things regarding family, parenting, mental health, um, a variety of topics. And this morning, we want to focus on bullying. Um, October is actually um, Bullying Awareness Month. And we just wanted to kind of focus on that a little bit and the conversation surrounding that. Um, bullying has definitely changed over the years. Um, if you're a parent, you know, it is on social media. And that can be very, very scary because it's not right in front of our faces like it used to be. Um, and we also have Allison with us as well. She is a school counselor. I'm gonna let her introduce herself real quick. Thanks for joining us, Allison. No problem. Thanks for having me. Okay, um, so yeah, you're a school counselor. Tell me a little bit where you're from and stuff like that. Um, I'm a school counselor at Great Lakes Learning Academy um, in East Lansing, Michigan. Um, been doing the school counselor thing for going on six years now, and I've worked with grades five through 12 at okay. this point. Perfect. And I think it's especially once you hit um, that middle school, there is when you really start to see that bullying. So I, I just mentioned it. Let's talk a little bit, you know, especially from your perspective, how bullying has changed over the years and the role that, you know, social media has definitely played um, and, and what it looks like these days for kids, especially around those, those um, ages. Yeah, so I think we all have this idea in our mind, um, this picture in our mind of bullying as, you know, the kid being hung upside down by his feet for lunch money or, you know, being shoved into a locker. And at one point, that's what bullying was. Bullying was physical and verbal. Um, and it happened at school and it stayed at school and the kids could come home and just leave it there. But that's not the case anymore. Um, that definitely happens. But there are two new forms of bullying that have started to come on the scene more. The first, um, we call it social bullying. And this is, I call this the mean girl form of bullying. Okay. This is when a student basically is trying to ruin another student's reputation. Um, they do this through gossiping, spreading lies, excluding them from their social circle. Um, and this one's a really hard one to pin down in schools because it's kind of low key and you don't necessarily see it happening. Um, the second one, which you already talk, mentioned, is the cyberbullying. And this is its a hot topic. It's happening everywhere. Um, and this is, I think, changing the game of bullying because it's not staying at school mm -hmm. anymore. These kids can't leave school and go home. And it's not safe for them at home because it's happening from the morning they wake up and look at their phone to when they go to sleep. Um, it's coming through text, social media. They just can't get rid of it. So, and that's why we're seeing more students having um, severe consequences to bullying because they don't get a mental break from the harassment that's happening. I think that's such a good point for people to remember, for parents to remember, um, you know, they can't escape this. I mean, it's around the clock, it's on the weekends. It's like you said, from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to bed, um, if they're being bullied, then this is something that's, they can't get a, they can't get away from it. And that's why it's more important than ever, probably for parents to recognize the signs and to have these kind of conversations. So what are some things um, that parents should look out for? Uh, maybe that their child could be being bullied. Yeah, obvious signs, you know, unexplained injuries, they come home, their stuff's destroyed. Um, broken jewelry, those are the obvious ones. And I think most parents know to look for those. Um, not so obvious. If you have a student that's complaining of frequent headaches, feeling sick, or they're faking an illness, that tends to be signs of anxiety in children. And that's also a big clue that something else is happening at school. Um, could be bullying, could be other things, but okay. usually bullying is one of those. Um, another thing would be skipping meals or when they come home, does it feel like they're binge eating? A lot of students will skip eating in the cafeteria if they're being bullied because they don't wanna be around the students. Um, difficulty sleeping, nightmares. Um, this next one, declining grades or a lack of interest in school. If you have a student who was an all-A student and loved going and suddenly they aren't an all-A student and they're avoiding going or making excuses, that's a huge sign um, that something is happening and they don't want to be at school anymore. 
if you know loss of friends, that one I'm seeing a lot with um, that social bullying. The you know they're getting excluded from the circle. Someone they might have been friends with for a while is not in the picture anymore, and that just seems strange. And then some more extreme ones: a decreased self-esteem, feelings of helplessness. Um, angry outburst if that's not normal for them, and also some self-destructive behaviors, uh, running away from home, self-harm, suicidal thoughts. Those are those are on the extreme end, but also can point to bullying happy, happening. Okay. And I know we're getting some comments here, and I'll get to those um, in a minute. But, you know, what what can a parent say to their child? You know, how do you start this conversation? Um, and I feel like especially kids around that age, you know, maybe they don't want to necessarily open up to mom and dad. They don't want to say something because they don't want their mom or dad storming into the school and making a big scene and making it worse for them or, you know, several different reasons why maybe they're keeping this to themselves. So, you know, what advice do you have for parents or caregivers to have these kind of conversations or what kind of things can they say to maybe get their child to open up? Yeah. Um, I don't know if there is necessarily a right or wrong thing. Every okay. student is different. Right. But I will say the first step, creating a safe space at home where they feel like they can open up to you. That can look like a lot of different things for different students. Um, but if they know that it's safe to share their story with you, if you have that open communication going prior to any bullying happening, that's huge. And you can start that at any age, just letting them know that they have that space with you. Um, the next biggest thing is don't react with anger or frustration when it happens. And I know that's hard. I'm a parent myself. If I heard that one of my kids was right. being bullied, my first reaction is going to be like, I have to protect my child. Um, but when we act, when we react in anger and frustration, that can sometimes shut down the student and they don't want to communicate anymore um, out of fear that the parent is going to storm into the school and make a big deal. And that may make the bullying worse or it's embarrassing or they don't want to be that kid. So ultimately, just listen and be ready to support them. They may not want a bunch of advice. I mean, I know what, me as an adult, I don't always want advice. That's I just true. want to be heard. Right. Um, and then one of the ways you can support them, this one kind of can throw parents off a little bit, but kids do better with bullying if they feel confident in themselves to handle the situation. So I regularly will encourage parents to role play scenarios with their students. Um, so that way they are equipped with tools on what they can say when these situations come up um, and how to handle them. That little bit of confidence can go a long way in students protecting themselves and standing up for themselves. Finally, make sure you report it to the school. I think there's a lot of assumptions that we know when the bullying is happening, um, but there are so many areas where it can go completely missed by us. So. Don't assume that we know, make sure you reach out to the school, whether it's an administrator or a school counselor or a teacher and make sure we know so that way we can take care of it on our end as well. Good advice there. And that kind of goes off of one of the questions that we got, um, you know, Barb said that her grandson ended up getting pulled from a school um, and that they reported it to the principal, but the principal didn't do anything. Um, you know, so maybe what would you suggest in that situation? reaching out I, to a school counselor or what, you know, finding another route? Yeah, um, I I would always do a follow-up with the principal to, and ask specifically what was done um, to get that first clarification. I think okay. sometimes it seems like nothing was done, okay. um, but stuff is done. It just might not have fixed the problem. No, I'm not every school. Um, I understand stuff gets missed and that may not be Barb's scenario, but I would always go back and ask for clarification on what was done. Um, and then you can always continue to go to more people mm -hmm. if the scenario keeps happening and ask for more solutions. And then another comment here from um, Josh says, can you comment on possible motivations behind bullying? Um, yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of things. I. For me personally, I did a lot of work with middle school girls. And okay. so that's where my experience um, is going to come in. I saw a lot of um, jealousy and feeling threatened. So a new girl comes into the school, she starts to hang out with my friend. 
I'm now feeling like I'm going to lose my friend. So that's when that social bullying and cyber bullying starts coming in because they're going to try to stop this new girl from taking my friend. Mm -hmm. um, or it could be I've seen, you know, feeling threatened over grades. I was the like teacher star student and now this other student is starting to be the star student. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's insecurities um, in the bully themselves. They might have low self-esteem and want to make themselves feel better. Uh, they might have a rough home life and they just bring it, they bring it to school. And that's all that, that's the only way they know how to express their emotions. And that kind of goes into the next topic is the, um, social emotional learning or SEL, um, which kind of covers both sides of that. So talk a little bit about what that is. A recent survey came out that said um, a number of teachers support this idea and think that it can really be a part of a solution to help curb a lot of um, bullying. So talk about what that is, what that looks like for people that may not be aware. Yeah. Um, so social emotional learning, it's an education practice where starting to integrate school curriculum. So in some cases, it may be a separate, like, count, like a separate group that gets done. But in a lot of cases, um, I know at Great Lakes, we are putting it into the classroom. So they're learning some of these skills while they're also learning English or science. Um, and it really focuses on five core things, self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, social awareness, and relationship skills. Um, the goal is ultimately to help our students learn how to understand and deal with their emotions when they come up. So from if, if we're teaching kids who are bullying social emotional learning, we're helping them sort through those emotions that they're dealing with. Oh, hey, you're feeling jealous because this person's hanging out with your friend. We're going to teach you some skills on how to sort through that and handle it how you should handle it. Um, the opposite end, hey, you're being bullied. Let's work on some skills that are going to help you deal with some of the um, low self-esteem you may be feeling or not wanting to go to school. How do we work through that? And these are all skills, honestly, like we all need, even as adults. It's stuff that just helps us kind of function as human beings. Yeah. So have you guys, you guys, you start started to use that then at Great Lakes? Yeah. Um, it's kind of like into the curriculum. So. Okay you know, a question for an English class that they have to write about might be on the topic of social emotional learning. So they're still practicing writing, but the topic being written about might be on like a social emotional scale. Yeah, it's more of like those real world life skills, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> um, that you can take with you. Definitely. Um, I love that idea. That that That's really great. So let's talk a little bit going off about going off from that you know, how you can, or how kids can help lift each other up, you know, um, what they can do to, to support one another, especially right now. And especially when it comes to like the social bullying and um, the cyber bullying, different ways that you can kind of have those tools. Yeah. Um, the one thing I like to say to parents and students all across the board, I think a simple acknowledgement that you see another student is significant. Um, a lot of our kids, especially when they're back and forth between being in a virtual set, uh, virtual setting or in um, in the classroom, it's easy to get missed. And when you don't feel like anyone's noticing you at school, um, that can just create a whole whole string of effects. Mm -hmm. So just acknowledging that you're seeing other students that can be saying hi in the classroom to the person who sits next to you. It can be a smile in the hallway. Um, it doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to make you go completely out of your comfort zone. Um, if you see someone sitting alone in the cafeteria, go sit with them. If you see someone sitting alone in a classroom, go and talk to them for a little bit. Um, and then another thing I always say, if you see someone being bullied, if you see it physically or if you know it's happening on social media, get help for that student. Um, maybe you're not comfortable intervening. And I don't always encourage students to jump right, right into the middle of it because that can create other problems. But um, be the person to go and get an adult in the situation to help them or alert 
a parent or a staff member that, hey, I saw this going down on Facebook the other night or on Instagram, and it made me a little concerned. A lot of times uh, victims of bullying don't want to come forward because they think it's going to make it worse. Mm -hmm. So you can be the person to help them get acknowledgement of that. Okay. And Cheryl here asked a question. She said, as school staff, what can we do to help the children without centering out anyone and drawing more attention um, to the situation? Yeah. Um, I think if you see, if you're watching something going on, you, I personally would create a scenario where I could bring the kid aside at some point. It, you know, um, if, Obviously, if someone's being physically hurt in that moment, we stop it. <laughs> um, but if it's you're kind of watching something happening and you want clarification on what's happening, there's always a time where you can bring them aside, whether it's between classes or at a break and kind of get a feel for what's going on. I also think that social emotional piece in a preventative way is huge because that's not centering anyone out, but it is also bringing attention to what's happening. Okay. Across the whole school. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting everyone. Yes. <laughs> so everyone's kind of in on, the, on that same page of that. Um, is there anything else that you want to add just as we wrap up here? Any final advice maybe for parents or students or? Yeah, I, nothing specific, but just, I think a lot of times kids feel alone. Parents feel alone. They feel, um, not that they're the only ones dealing with it, but you know, that they are lost. They don't know how to yeah. handle it always reach out to a staff member, someone that you trust in the school. Um, that's part of why we're here is to help parents and help kids uh, work through this stuff. So don't feel like you're alone. You have to handle it on your own because you don't. All right. Well, I appreciate your time to talk about this. Um, some really good advice there that hopefully um, families can kind of take and start the conversation if they need to, or just remember um, if something were to come up in the future. So thank you so much uh, for your time. I appreciated everyone that hopped on and asked questions and participated. Um, that's great. So if you have any ideas for future topics, maybe that you want to address, feel free to shoot me an email. It's right at the bottom there, um, or send me a message on Instagram or Facebook. So thank you so much again, Allison, and hope everyone has a good day. We'll see you later.